Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Tullianos, brought to you by his books, Bodybuilding, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, gives you an excellent overview of all the PEDs used in our sport, cycles, side effects, doses, then the sequel written last year, Training, Nutrition, Supplementation, and Bodybuilding, because you need to know all that, just not the PED info. And of course, if you're on Amazon.com buying Dr. George's books, just buy mine while you're at it, Real Bodybuilding by Ron Harris, what a great book. And now, all the way from Athens, Greece, please welcome Dr. George Tuliados. Hey, Doc. Hi, Ron. How was it in Tampa? Great. You know what the, the, the best part about it for me was? No masks. You didn't have to wear a mask yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Really. Anywhere. I mean, Biden said that the, the vaccinated people are mask-free but indoors, right? Yeah, a lot of people still wear them. I'd say about 20 to 25 percent of people still had masks on regardless because they, really? they maybe they're not vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, or they just didn't feel comfortable but uh yeah i mean it was almost like things were back to normal almost there was no social distancing in the seating for the show and uh it was a great show the new york pro was always a really good show yeah yeah and uh so the, you think nick walker was uh had the best package on this hands down yeah the minute he came out it was there's your winner right there you know he was just that dumb and he was so big round detailed fine you find, yeah, separated, you find. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's going to go far. I see that. I see him in top five, top six at the Mr. Olympia within a couple of years. You think he can beat now? Uh, I don't think he's the, in, in the level of Hadi or uh, Flex. No, no. He needs but he's more. short. He's 5'7", I think. Yeah, he's about 5'7". He was about 250 on stage, I think. Oh, really? That's a lot, yeah. man. Yeah, he's a big, big kid, man. <laughs> he's only 26 years old. I know, I know. He's really yeah. talented, you know? So, a lot of, a lot of you time won, for You won the Nationals? He won, he, won, he won the North American last year. Hmm. But uh, yeah, because, you know, Flex Flex, and uh, these guys were taught, Hadi, they have a lot more muscle maturity and detail. Yeah, sure. I think Nick's going to have that. It's just going to take him a little more time. He's got, look at the size on him already. So much mass. I'm sure Steve is going to have him on the, on, the, on the cover, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I think we're shooting him. I mean, who wouldn't want that guy on your cover, right? Yeah. <laughs> what about the wellness, the women, man? Huh? Yeah, that's the first time I ever got to see a really good wellness lineup. And wow, smoke shows. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous and uh, big, thick quads and glutes. Lemon, yeah, yeah. Hams, you know, just they look like they could all squat. Perfect. Four or five. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's dominated by uh, obviously Brazilians because they've had wellness in Brazil for at least 10 years, I think. Mm. Uh, if, you know, lower body genetics with the glutes and everything. You see mm -hmm. most of that in Lati Latin women and African-American women. So there were yeah. a, a couple of really good African-American athletes, too. You know, you, you hate to say that uh, your ethnicity should even play a role in how you do in a division, but it does. In seem, genetics, I think so, yeah. It does. It does. I mean, there we'll see. I mean, well, white men have good uh, calves, for instance. You know, they have the soul yeah, as much. Exactly. That's just, you know, that's the way it is. You can't deny that. It's, it's uh, you look at a lot, look at a thousand people and look at their calves and you'll figure it out pretty quick. Uh, it's rare to find a combo of a great body with a gorgeous face in, in women women's you know feminism you know? right well you know like you talked on buff bombshells last week there's so many androgenizing effect masculinizing effects from the hormones you know steroids when women use them it's very very tricky it's a it's hard for them to stay yeah. feminine and still use enough drugs to put on a lot of muscle mass but they seem to have a good balance i'm still i mean trying, if you take you know, the top two competitors in women's wellness just ahead they can yeah. model, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the winner, Yarishna. Uh, also the, the Brazil and the blonde one. Yeah, Angela. I mean, they're both gorgeous. And uh, so Dr. Oh. Sunny Andrews, I think she was fifth place. Geez, a lot of, there's a lot of really beautiful women in wellness. That's but the wellness is a step further than bikini and before uh, physique, I think. You know, to me, they have, uh, their upper bodies aren't as big as women's physique, but their lower bodies are bigger than women, most women in women's physique, but they don't get ripped. They're not supposed to be ripped. They want them to have a, so, a little softer look. They're mm -hmm. still lean, but they're not, you know, striated glutes and, which is good because when the women get that lean, their faces get really hollow, like skeleton looking. That's not, a, women don't look really good with no fat on their face. Mm -hmm. You know, men, I don't know if men do either, but it's, it definitely doesn't look, it's not a good look for a, a female to have. How about the quad of Mustafa, Jose Mustafa? Uh, uh, pretty normal, fun. say, but not so well defined. It was a bit of water retention, you know, and and yeah. perhaps smoother than uh, than Walker's, but enormous. It, it reminds me of branch water quads, you know. 
Branch, Rami. I mean, it's they did because yeah, yeah. he has that sweep and they come out to the side right. so far. He's going to be good. He's he's getting better and better. I mean, I, he's going to start winning shows pretty soon, I think. It's Chris Asito, I think. Yeah. yeah, he just needs a little more conditioning. This was the best I've ever seen him. I think it's the third time I've seen him compete. He's getting better. Aceto is so getting Walker better. will be on stage and win this stage, yeah? Yeah, yeah. The uh, youngest competitor, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think Hunter Hunter Labrad is a couple years older than him. Ian Valier is like 29. They're all young guys. There's there's a lot more young people coming into the pro ranks, thank goodness. But uh, it's going to be – it's interesting to see the – the older guys sort of walk out of the sport and the young and the younger the guys. Yeah. yeah. And we need that. We can't have all 50 year old guys up on the Olympic stage. <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you one thing, Nick Walker, whenever he was out on stage, the crowd was so loud. It, it hurt your ears. It was that loud. People were screaming for him. They love this. Kid. Huh? Very much a crowd favorite. Very popular. Yeah. Mm. he's a great uh, you know uh, he's a new American hope you know yeah yeah I mean we haven't had someone like that I mean after after Dallas that's right Kuklo he's new blood yeah so I'm excited for him um, yeah too I wish you could have gone out it was a really good show you would have had a good time there um, all right doctor we got some questions this is Ask, Do Ask Dr. Testosterone mm -hmm. let's kick it off these are the questions that came in since last week okay this is hey doctor what is your personal opinion on Salbutamol versus clenbuterol in terms of fat loss, is it really just as effective with less side effects? Yeah, well, I have analyzed this in uh, Muscular Development Latino Espanol oh. with Ken, uh, with, uh, uh, with Sanderson. Uh, Kit, yeah, Kit. Mm -hmm. Kit, Kit Sanderson, yeah. So actually, <clears throat> the best, uh, I mean, both of them are bitter to agonists that are uh, technically are against asthma. So they do bronchodilation in order to increase VO2 max and you suck up air more. And this way, uh, you stimulate the BMR through the oxygen consumption and the fat burning, of course. The point is clenbuterol is more effective in, in fat burning, but it's less effective against asthma. So my sister, who's a pediatrician, prefers to give some salbutamol spray inhaler that goes directly to the, to the bronchi, to the receptors, and it relieves you from the bronchus up, as you know, this crisis that you have the, the coughing. On the other hand, clenbuterol is less effective in against asthma, but in bodybuilders is more effective in fat burning, but also in blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So you have crazy blood pressure with clenbuterol mm -hmm. back here, cervical, okay, systolic blood pressure. Yeah. However, it's more effective but less, uh, for fat burning, but less effective for asthma, unlike salbutamol, which relieves you from bronchospasm and coughing, but it's less effective and actually safer for the blood pressure. Than all hmm. So I don't know. I didn't even know bodybuilders were using this. There are a lot of bodybuilders using salbutamol. They do just instead. before, uh, just before on stage, they give uh, some salbutamol to take hmm. breaths because with all these lights and you know the, the, in the basement, you no know, stage is so packed, you yeah. cannot breathe easily. You know. True. Well, you know what? In the old days, we used to, the bodybuilders used to put this stuff on called hot stuff. They were supposed to bring your veins, make the, it was a vasodilator, you rubbed it on. Yeah. And that stuff, you could breathe great Especially with that Especially if you use train, you have coughing, you know, because of cortisol. Right. And you need this as a compensatory mechanism, you know. Interesting. Okay. There's another one. Hey, Doc. Doc and Ron, my doc put me on blood pressure meds and Lipitor both once a day. So here it is. This cycle, I guess. 700 Sustanon, 300 Tranacetate. And 50 milligrams Winnie a week. I think he means 50 milligrams Winnie a day, and the other thing is a weekly. And two days on off of Clen at 40 micrograms AM and PM. I've never had high cholesterol and triglycerides because I do eat at least, oh, because I do at least 20 to 30 minutes of cardio three to four times a week, but never this high before. I'm of the belief that once I go to TRT dose, this will all subside. Any info is great. I'm cutting right now. Also, is that a good stack, in your opinion? So, uh, so it's not a good idea to use statins while stacking those mm. poisons because he's really doing a nasty cycle. Mm. That's really liver toxic. Statins are also liver toxic through our rhabdomyolysis. Jeez. If you take this gear, you're going to break down your muscles like rhabdo. And statins will enhance this effect, mm. making your uh, liver enzymes go up to the red zone, you know? Yeah. And also, you feel extremely sore with statins, especially if you train with gear. 
So mm -hmm. I would suggest to use some alternative uh, supplements into the cycle and use the sta statics afterwards. Right. You know, when you get off the cycle. Well, he needs to All be right? on, doesn't he need to be on the statins every day for medical purposes? Yeah, but not inside the cycle. It's not a good idea because you're breaking too much of muscles, you cannot recover, and those uh, liver, those, um, this rhabdomyolysis, the CPK will release myoglobin that will affect not only the kidney, but the liver and the muscles have the same enzymes for ALT, AST. Hmm. So it's not a good idea, you know, just use the status afterwards. And um, what about the blood pressure meds? The blood pressure, now, Trembolone is not a good idea if you have blood pressure, hmm. okay? Because it increases also blood pressure. And that's why Trembolone affects the kidneys hmm. and the glomerulus, the se se segmental glomerular sclerosis, like Connor says. Yeah. Because it hits the glomerulus, which is a filter that filtrates the blood and turns it into urine, you know, yeah. and the waste and the, and the product, the waste product. So he has to reform his cycle, you know, take off Trembolon and <laughs> use the statins um, after the cycle. So within the cycle, I suggest to use a clean diet with essential fatty acids, those agents that are described in my book for the lipid profile. Avoid, of course, crappy fat and trans fat and. Uh, uh, fried food, of course, refined sugars. Yeah. And um, of course, do not smoke, okay? Yeah. And make sure you use the statins afterwards because you're gonna have serious trouble with your muscle tissue, your recovery, and you're gonna kick further your liver inside. Gotcha, okay. Next one is, given that provirin taken orally has a bioability of only 3%, is that right, first of all, 3%? I've heard that, that Anavar has 30%, you know, one third was found in the urine. Yeah. You remember that? Right. Uh, which is also 70 alkylated and it's, it, it, susta it, susta it survives the, the liver bypass. So perhaps if, if this is true, then he claims to use this sublingually. Yeah. But another idea is to use cream of DHT. Oh, I didn't finish the question, so people don't know what we're talking about. So he wanted to know because the bioavailability, bioavailability is so low, and you've said this so many times, would it be a good idea to take it sublingually to maximize its potency while not wasting much of the drug? You've been saying this. Geez, well, the reason I'm saying that is, is for less stress in the liver. Okay. Yeah. But what about the bioavailability? Uh, More of it does get utilized sublingually than if you just swallow the pill, right? Well, if you use it sublingually, it resembles like the injected because hmm. it goes directly to the bloodstream yeah. instead of going first to the liver and then to the bloodstream. Right. All right, so, um, but we can use DHT cream, you know, you can apply it hmm. and uh, it has 10% by love of me, wow. the cream. But this yeah. guy must, the, it, 3%, I've never heard of that low a bioavailability of an oral steroid. I mean, come on, if you take four pills, only 3%, three milligrams are, uh, That's, <laughs> are, are you to, like, assimilate. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's more like 30, right? I think he just, maybe he forgot to put the zero after the three. <laughs> Like three is ridiculously low. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Dr. T, what can I do to improve immunity during this COVID times? Like vitamin C, tonic water, quinine. My friend got sick two weeks ago with cough, cold, fever. He told me it wasn't COVID. I need to suggest it to him. Well, I, unless he got tested. So it's sure. vitamin C, it's vitamin D, zinc, yeah. NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine, glutathione. Yeah. All right, and you may also use some uh, probiotics because the intestine, the small intestine, um, deals with the immunity, yeah. and um, some echinacea that stimulates uh, white blood cells. Hmm. So this whole stack is is good. Here's a great question, with especially with so many people getting vaccinated against COVID virus right now. I don't know why nobody even asked this question until now. Dr. T, is it okay to take testosterone or continue my test cycle with DECA or TREN after the first shot of COVID vaccine? Clover. No TREN, no. TREN induces inflammation. That's why you feel crappy and you have slight fever and you feel mm. rusty, you know? So take it off TREN because it's a poison, literally. Wow. So you don't need that into your immune system. Because besides TREN crashes on mm. cortisol, that is anti-inflammatory hormone and regulates the immune response. So you don't need that uh, mess up, you know? So a little bit of, uh, yeah, your TRT dose is effective because if you have low testosterone during the COVID uh, infection, most likely you're gonna have visceral fat 
that releases inflammatory cytokines. So people who are rushed into the hospital with COVID and have bad prognosis, more, some of them are with low testosterone, you know, mm. especially the elderly. Wow. Um, a little bit of DECA you, you can apply it, but in reasonable doses, you know. But, so just for your joints, not, not, not a blasting of DECA. Yeah, because then he went on, will test or DECA or TREND make the vaccine ineffective? No, 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 no. Come on, forget about TREND. <laughs> okay, so finish up your second dose, and then you may start a serious cycle, but do not in include TREND because there will be um, per perhaps, uh, you know, triggering inflammation, you know? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Like I don't, I'm, I'm, it's a good thing you're talking about this because I don't think, I've never even heard bodybuilders asking about this, and so many of them are getting vaccinated. Now about AstraZeneca uh, that we have in Europe, that yeah. supposedly some very few incidents cases of thrombosis. I suggest to the bodybuilders that have a hematocrit over 52 or 54. You know, I mean basically hemoglobin over 18. To so use mm -hmm. aspirin, fish oil and pentoxifilin in order to make less viscous the blood, you know, because just in case you have thrombotic effect, better your blood to be less viscous and more thin, you know? Yeah. But actually traveling on air in the airplane has more uh, possibilities of getting clotting is one out of a thousand. Okay. And the AstraZeneca is one, one out of quarter of a million, you know? Wow. Yeah, because I'm on a plane every three weekends in a row this month, I'm on a plane. <sighs> Scary because I just got vaccinated about a month ago with the Johnson and Johnson. So, hmm. but so the, the worst thing to do is mix the vac any of the vaccines with Tren. It sounds like because of the influence. Come on, yeah, leave out Tren out. You know because it's it's a nasty drug. Yeah. Everyone loves Tren though, Doc. They love it. Oh, it's delicious. Okay, next one. I'm 46. I will start a cycle. 300 milligrams testinate and two IU's of GH for 16 weeks. What do you think? And what do you suggest to burn stubborn fat and build muscle? I've trained for 10 years. My test is in low normal ranges. Yeah, so this is a good start for anti-aging. Perhaps you may, you may apply some T4, mm -hmm. you know, but to lower the carbs, lower the calories, increase the cardio to burn the stubborn fat. <laughs> yeah. What should you use? You should use DMP, come on. Yeah, well, you wouldn't believe how many people are using DMP now. There's a guy I know, I'm not going to say his name, but... Every, Wrong perspective. He's ripped all the time. He's got veins everywhere. And every day he posts pictures of these disgusting, like triple burgers with cheese and things dripping off of them and grease and stacks of greasy fries with cheese dripping off. So that's the problem is he's going to clog his arteries with that shit. Yeah, well, he loves his uh, fast food, clearly. Tre another trend balloon question, doctor. Can trend balloon be run safely in the off season and straight into contest prep? Dosage would only be between 150 milligrams to 300 milligrams per week. What do you mean safely? I mean, what are your labs, your lipids, your blood pressure, your liver, your hematocrit, you know, your okay. kidney? That, that is safely. <laughs> I mean, so it's one of the least safe drugs you can use, right? Listen, it's not a 70 calculator, but I had a case in, at the office. Somebody was, he was using trend low dose, let's say 200, hmm. six months in a row. Uh, his liver enzymes were three digits old. Wow. You know? hmm. wow. Yeah, and his his lipids were really bad. Yeah. So I mean, how long do you think? I know you, we can't put a real number on it, but how long could the average bodybuilder use trend before they started using? It depends if you stack it with other agents. Yeah. I mean, they're all everybody's on test, so test is always a base for pretty much everybody. But yeah. a lot of, and a lot of also guys, how your liver enzymes are or how your lipids are just before they introduce in trend. Yeah. If you're in, got, in a good shape already, you know? Yeah. And, you know, it's, in, it's individual. It's a genetic thing. Some people are going to have a lot worse reaction in terms of their blood Depends work. on the food, depends on the genetics, depends on the cardio, depends on the preventing supplements. Yeah. So it's, almost, okay. it's, it's really an impossible question to answer. Multifactorial. Yeah. Too many, too many factors, too many variables, guys. Final question. Wow. Also related to trend, doctor. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. We, this is how you know summer is coming when everyone's asking about trend, right? Hi, doctor. How can I overcome the extreme lethargy and feeling of low blood glucose on trend cutting cycle? This is a very good point, you know, and it's a really deep shit question. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So I'll, I'll answer you. This guy has a point, you know? Mm. And I was discussing this with a brilliant mind who's no longer in life, you know, Peter Van Mol. So listen, uh, Trembolum, as we said, is very anabolic. One of the reasons it's very anabolic is because it, it crashes the catabolic cortisol. Mm. Okay, now cortisol, we know that it uses hyperglycemia through gluconeogenesis, but it increases blood sugar, okay? Mm. So crashing on cortisol, we don't have this effect of hyperglycemia. So if you take Tren, you, ex you experience hyperglycemia. Wow. So hmm. this is how this is explained, this, this, point, uh, this guy has a point. So I guess he has increased his carb intake, all right? Yeah. Uh, and never take Tren uh, with an empty stomach, you know? <laughs> First thing <laughs> the most Are you serious? <laughs> you never take an injection of Tren on an empty stomach? Yeah, I have your cardio, for instance. It's not a good idea because also it will make you choking. Oh, wow. Well, you know? Uh, trend cough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But this I never heard... So lethargy is like really being tired and uh, I never no, even no, heard... No, so it's... it's, it's a, yeah, it could be hypoglycemia. Yeah, I never heard could of this. It could be also thing. insulin resistance that induces hypoglycemia, but also high, low blood pressure. Yeah, wow. Okay. See, this is terrible. Trend is such a very powerful, effective drug, but Jesus, is it dangerous? Damn it! It's got so many possible side effects. It's if you, you if you go in pee, man, you, your your urine stinks and it's brown. <laughs> well, that's it's like rust. It's like rust. Well, that's the liver damage, right? That's high liver enzymes when you're pissing brown. Brown is yeah, could be urobilirubin. Yeah, that comes from bilirubin, which is the the way the the product of the liver yeah so Ruben, yeah. Hmm. it's a nasty thing you know it smells really heavy <laughs> yeah i mean pee is not supposed to smell that bad guys if it does something's usually wrong yeah unless you just ate asparagus your pee will smell like asparagus but uh i remember when i was in, in, in the you know in the warming up room uh, when i was at the nationals you know warming up you could smell the androgens in the wow. <laughs> yeah yeah easily you know was it coming out of people's sweat yeah, man, absolutely. <laughs> Seeping out of their pores, as we say, because yeah. it's it's crazy. The byproducts like metabolites or whatever, because like I, I've been around people uh, who got really drunk on a certain type of alcohol, like tequila or vodka. And when they're sweating the next morning, you can smell whether they, what they drank based on their sweat. It smells like tequila or vodka or a whiskey. Or whatever. And also your breath stinks of alcohol. Yeah, of course, of course. Wow, guys, a lot of trend questions. I expect you'll have more trend questions for next time. Please leave all your questions in the comments below. Please go to the doctor's website, gtoul.com. A lot of excellent articles there in English and Greek. Pick up his book, of course. It's now in Italian, English, and yeah. Greek. Yeah, three languages yeah. so far that's uh, <laughs> available. And uh, probably some more languages coming up soon, I imagine. We have requests. I saw somebody asking you on your Instagram. They want it in Spanish, too. So... Check yeah, I hope. Yeah, I hope so. Check out the doctor's Instagram. It's at Dr. George Suliados. Actually, a lot of good training tips. The doc is outside working out. I didn't ask you how's your back coming along because you had back. You had back. Yes, look, you know, I, I began uh, squatting up again. You know, but wow. with, of course, lower, um, and also some a little bit of deadlift. So I was low. Wow. Low, uh, yeah. You're Just very low. Come on, it's it's okay. Uh, I guess it's uh, how much uh, you know. Uh, about 70 pounds, you know? Okay. Not a lot. You know what you're doing. I'm just doing right? the movements, you know? Yeah. But I can do perfectly well the chest training, okay. you know? Yeah, you're all supported with the, with the bench behind you. Absolutely, yes, yeah. yes. Dead. I can't believe you're already squatting and deadlifting in, though. That's, wow. But let, come on, Ron. Uh, 50 pounds is not... It's, it's no, not, I know, but still, you're, okay. All right, stay safe, Doc. We need you around. We need you uh, up, and, up and about, not like in a wheelchair, okay? I don't want to see that, so... That's it, guys. We appreciate you watching. Leave your questions here. This is a very unique opportunity you get every week to get these type of questions answered by not only a medical doctor, but a medical doctor who was a national bodybuilding champion. He's walked the walk and talked the talk. There's not many doctors like that out there. So we're very, very lucky. To when have is the next show now? Uh, I don't think. Well, Indy. We're not, uh, oh, Indy was Indy in New York. Indy. So we're going to... Uh, we're going to be at the Chicago Pro in July. I don't think we have anything for June. Uh, Steve Kuklo said he's going to compete in two shows in Texas. The Puerto Rico Pro is next week, next month at the end. Yeah, there is a Texas Pro. I can't remember what they do. Oh, I think that's in August. 
because August has Tampa, they have the Europa Pro in Texas, and then I don't know about Toronto. I don't know if that's going to happen because I think they're still locked down. You going to be to Puerto Rico? I'd love to go to Puerto Rico. It's in the Bahamas, actually. It's called Puerto Rico Pro, but they put Victor it Victor the will be there. Victor will be there. Huh? Victor Martinez? He's mm -hmm. not Puerto Rican. He's Dominican. But Dominican. Okay, sure. I can tell you the only one I think is probably going to win right now is uh, for figure. It's probably going to be from Puerto Rico, Jessica Reyes Padilla. She's very, very good. And she's, she's won that show before. She's won the New York Pro twice. And she you speak Spanish? Yeah, I can fake it for about two minutes before I start not knowing the right words, but I can I can fake it for a little. I was. Oh, you understand listening, huh? Yeah. When I go to Florida, I get to practice. And when I'm with Hector, who's our, our videographer and our photographer, Hector's fluent English and Spanish. So I get to practice a little bit with him and he'll help me out. If I don't know a word, I'll ask him. And so it's getting better. Yeah. I'll get it back. I mean, I've been, I took it in school, you know, 35 years ago. Now your wife is a speaks Spanish. Cuban, yeah. Very much so, but she's yeah. she's American. She was born here. She speaks it very she speaks it very well, but she speaks English around the house and mm. shouldn't shouldn't speak Spanish to the kids or anything like that. Yeah. How many like, now? You speak Greek, English, and what else? Uh, you know, a few words of uh, German and uh, you know Italian and Hungarian. You know, wow, but not fluently. You know, still Hungarian. How the heck did you pick that one up? Yes, I spent there three years. You know. Oh wow! Wow, I did not know that. What were you doing in Hungary, in Hungary for three years? I started over there, the medical school. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bud Budapest? Budapest, yeah. Budapest. Oh, okay, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Fans of uh, Arnold, you know? <laughs> yeah, I would think so, right? Cool. I started lifting over there, you know? Really? That's where you started yeah. weight training, was Hungary? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I just assumed you did it for sports when you were in... Uh, well, well, it was 1989 in high school, but seriously, every day, Hmm. Was it hungry? No. Wow. In medical school. Yeah, during the pre-med course and after medical. School, yeah. Okay. I had no idea about the, you know supplements in gear. Right. That's probably probably was a good thing that you didn't know because you got to train naturally for a while and really learn your body. Yeah, okay. sure. Yeah. So, so all right, doctor. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks everybody for watching. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that little bell notification so you know when we put out new videos. We have so many videos out this week from New York Pro. Uh, we're just putting out all the stage videos, uh, the call outs, the pose downs, the awards, all that. Uh, that should all be up tomorrow as you watch this. So check that out for sure. And we'll see you next time on Ask Dr. Testosterone.